Hello and welcome to the uh, second video in uh, chemical nomenclature. This video is going to focus on uh, writing binary ionic compounds and then uh, ionic compounds containing polyatomic ions, also known as uh, ternary ionic compounds. Uh, but it's, it's kind of just a descriptive term. It's not exclusive. So um, just, just going to jump right in. Um, when we need to write the formula of a binary binary ionic compound, it means we already have the chemical name. Like for example, if it if it just said magnesium fluoride here, if it if we if we had uh, oops, red won't work here. Let's get green. It said magnesium fluoride here first thing we would be noticing is that we have a metal followed by a nonmetal. okay and when we see that that should tip our brains right into an ionic compound we have to term, determine the charge of each ion magnesium we know comes from group two and when it forms ion they ions they have a positive two charge or two plus fluorine when it becomes a fluoride ion becomes a one minus charge so write the charges so we're going to write the cation first and then the anion first with their charge or then the anion after the cation with their charge and these are our two ions written uh, as formulas so once we've got that we can jump just sort of before we jump forward I want to say one thing keep in mind the cations always express first then the anion okay we're writing them exactly as we already do we just don't use the term ion okay we say magnesium ion and fluoride ion. There's no word for ion here. It's indicative when we see this charge written here, this oxidation state. So cation, then anion expressed as a formula. Then we're going to basically manipulate the quantities of each ion to satisfy the needs of the other. Magnesium needs to get rid of two electrons. Fluoride needs to gain one. So if fluoride can only gain one, then it's going to take two fluorides to satisfy magnesium and form a compound with zero charge. So here we go. got to have two fluorines. This is the way we do it. That's pretty much it. We have to have two fluorines. It's expressed as a subscript following the element. Keep in mind these need to be in lowest whole number ratio. So for example, if you somehow came up with uh, Mg2F4 for some unknown compound, you could reduce that to MgF2. So let's do a few together. Calcium oxide. Calcium comes from group 2, so we would expect it to have a 2 plus charge. Oxide comes from group 16, which should have a 2 minus charge. Since each one, yeah, since calcium needs to lose 2 and oxide needs to gain 2, C, A, O. Magnesium chloride. Magnesium needs to lose 2. We just did that one. Chloride. It's the same as in fluorine, so this should be analogous to magnesium fluoride where we need two chlorides to satisfy magnesium. Oop, I almost wrote fluoride. Sodium nitride, sodium 1 plus. Nitrogen comes from group 15, the purple group here uh, at the top. That group tends to take on a negative 3 charge. So that means it needs to gain 3 electrons. Now, if, sodium, if nitrogen needs to gain 3 electrons, and sodium only has 1 to offer, I'm going to need 3 sodiums to handle nitride. So it's going to be Na3N. Now, once we have the formula going the other direction, is is a little bit simpler. With a, something, a substance like sodium chloride NaCl, we need to look at it purely for what is it. We need to identify it first. Even though this is our first L, uh, compound type, we need to have the skill of being able to identify the compound by type before we try to give it a, a, a name. So we should note that there's a metal followed by a nonmetal here. That in itself is indicative of an ionic compound. Okay, metal written first, nonmetal written second. The same is true, true for magnesium chloride, metal, then nonmetal. So because of that, we know we're going to be using the binary ionic naming rules that we've been using that basically what it amounts to is we're going to name each ion. We're going to give it its name. We're not going to use the word ion, but we're going to give it its name to indicate that those two ions are bound together. This is sodium ion bound to chloride ion, so it's sodium chloride. This is magnesium ion bound to chloride ion, magnesium chloride. Always going to be written cation followed by anion according to these charges. So, if I have calcium and fluorine, I have a metal nonmetal. I don't worry about how many fluorides are there. It doesn't matter because the charge tells me 
how many I need to put in the compound if I'm going the other direction. So all I need to write is calcium fluoride. This RA is radium. Radium is at the bottom of group 2. Nitrogen, nitride, here. Metal, nonmetal again. Radium. Nitride. Finally, sodium and oxygen. Sodium and then oxygen. We don't care how many sodiums are there. It doesn't make a difference in the naming. Sodium oxide. We name each ion without fail. If it's an ionic compound, each ion gets named. That brings us to writing formulas for ionic compounds containing polyatomic ions. Um, polyatomic ions can act as cations. Um, really, there's only one ammonium. And our friend ammonium, if you recall from your learning, is Na4 with a plus one charge. Okay. This molecule, if I were drawing it out, the skill you'll learn in the spring, would look like this. So nitrogen with four hydrogens, and there's a positive one charge on that nitrogen. Now, you don't need to know that exactly yet, but this is to show you. This is what NH4 one plus means. This is so a nitrogen bound to four hydrogens. It's got a positive one charge. Um, polyatomic anions is pretty much the rest of them. You've memorized them. Um, please just be, note, be very, very mindful of these. When you see ite and ide, make sure you just look twice. This tends to be the most confused problem for students uh, when we're doing nomenclature. You get in a hurry. Ite is not ide. Okay. Ide indicates you're dealing with an anion or a nonmetal in a molecule. It doesn't doesn't equate at all to ite. Ite is a polyatomic ion type. We'll talk about shortly. So, when um, writing formulas for ionic compounds with polyatomic ions, we're going to be given the, the chemical formula, I mean, sorry, the chemical name, like for this ex example, ammonium carbonate. We're going to uh, write the cation and the anion, then we're going to balance charges. We're going to place parentheses around the PI. This is an abbreviation meaning polyatomic ion. And again, you know all these. You are an expert. If you need more than uh, if you need more than one copy of a polyatomic ion, you'll put it in parentheses, and you'll put a two after. Okay, we'll talk about that when we get there. Do not ever alter the formula of a polyatomic ion. If you're saying something is nitrate, and you decide, oh, I, I don't think the three goes. It's no longer nitrate if you change this one or this three. It's no longer nitrate. Do not ever manipulate these quantities, even if you see a number out here. That does not mean distribute me through. It means that's how many nitrates you have. If you manipulate this quantity at all, it will no longer be what you say it is. Do not manipulate this in O3. And also, do not ever distribute numbers into what's in the parentheses. These will always stay exactly as they are. So let's do ammonium carbonate. We know ammonium. Hi there, ammonium. How are you? I'm Mr. Crump. It's okay. It's not talking back. It's all going to work out. Carbonate. We know that's CO3 with a 2 minus charge. So, I've written them. Now what do I do? Okay. Keep in mind, I can't manipulate this species here. It's got to stay in H4. I can't manipulate this CO3. It's got to stay CO3. This CO3 needs two electrons. Ammonium has but one to give. So I'm going to have to have two ammoniums to handle carbonate. So I'm going to put in parentheses in H4 with a 2 because i got to have two of them carbonate, I don't need to put parentheses around. I almost did it, but I'm going to turn my parentheses into a C, because it's a capital C. It's kind of cool looking that way. Alright. Aluminum nitrate. Now, aluminum is just a regular old monoatomic monovalent cation, right? So, aluminum, group 13, 3 plus charge. Nitrate, though. Nitrate, NO3 with a negative 1 charge. Okay, I put the parentheses there, so I knew I, was gonna, I, knew I needed to use them. You're not going to know necessarily right away. But aluminum has three electrons to give. Nitrate only can take one. So how many nitrates do I need? You're right. Well done. Aluminum will require three nitrates to form aluminum nitrate, a compound with no charge. So you notice the absence of any writing here where my pen is moving around. That means there is no charge on this compound. Okay. Again, I have this little this script at the bottom. It says cation followed by anion because invariably every year somebody comes up and, and writes this and 
This is, makes my eye twitch. This. <laughs> Terrible. Wrong. Don't even know what that means. It's like a grocery list or something. It's that guy. That, that little meaning. This has meaning. Cation, anion. Write the formula for the following ionic compounds. Okay, let's do this. Magnesium bisulfate. Wow. Okay. So, magnesium. Got it. Group 2. 2 plus charge. Bisulfate. Bisulfate. Hmm. Hydrogen sulfate. Magnesium's got to give 2. Bisulfate can only take 1. Silly old me. Skipped right by this first example. Calcium chloride. Calcium needs to give two. Chloride can take one. Similar situation. Calcium, I just need the one. But chloride, I need two of them. Notice I didn't manipulate my chloride ion at all. Put the parentheses on. Put my number on the outside. Gallium dichromate. Gallium is a little like aluminum. Really interesting metal gallium. But here it's an ion. Dichromate ion. Okay, now this gets complicated. Gallium's got to give three. Dichromate can take two. What witchery? So, let's go lowest common uh, lowest common denominator, six. There's not lowest common denominator. Greatest common, lowest common factor, six. So, let's give six electrons away, and let's take six electrons. To do that, I need two gallium and three dichromates. Hold on to your britches. Two gallium. Three dichromates. Success. Going the other way, given a chemical formula, how do we write the formula? Or how do we write the chemical name? Here's the rules. Ready to write all this down. The rule is write each ion's name. You're done. Notice I have a metal, calcium. I have a polyatomic ion, phosphate. If you see a polyatomic ion in a compound, it's going to be an ionic compound. Because it's an ion. It's in the name, right? So if it's an ionic compound, all we're doing is writing each ion's name. We do not ever manipulate a polyatomic ion's name or formula. It stays exactly as it is. That is all. Calcium and phosphate is calcium phosphate. Awesome. Examples, examples, examples. Lithium cyanide. Got it. Lithium bound to cyanide ion. Strontium bound to phosphite. This is shooting fish in a barrel, kids. Zinc and hydroxide. I don't care how many of them there are. Doesn't matter. It's an ionic compound. The quantity is in the charge. The fact that I know zinc is plus 2 and hydroxide is minus 1 tells me that there's this 2 here. The fact that strontium is plus 2 and phosphite is minus 3 tells me I've got to have 2 phosphites per 3 strontiums. Don't need to put a number into the name. Finally, ammonium and borate. Man, that's simple. Let's throw a wrinkle in this, just for fun. What if I had this? Ammonium chloride. Remember, this is an ionic compound. Ammonium is a cation. That means chlorine must be an anion here. So we would give it the name ammonium chloride. Let's build one together, just for giggles. So, calcium phosphate. Calcium carries plus two charge, so I'm going to drag this guy here. And then phosphates, this big cat here. Look at that thing. Wow. Phosphorus, three oxygens, negative three charge. It's madness. How do I res how do I fix that though? I can't do one to one ratio because it would have a charge. It wouldn't be a compound, it'd still be an ion. We don't want that. Well, if I throw another calcium in, now I have a plus four charge and a negative three charge. It still doesn't work. Well, let's put another phosphate in here. Okay, now I've got plus four and negative six. I can fix this now by putting another calcium here. And that is what we needed to do. We literally can see that we build our molecule 
or build our compound, pardon me, not a molecule, this is an, a formula unit of calcium phosphate, that we need three calciums for every two phosphates. So we write it thusly. And that is the end of ionic naming with uh, binary ionic compounds and ionic compounds containing polyatomic ions. I hope you've taken high quality notes. We look forward to our next visit in class.